Hi, I'm David Pereira. Welcome to my channel. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite topics. What is not the role of a product owner? It's often the case that we focus on what we should do and we ignore totally what we should not. Then we may mutate ourselves in something else, but not a product owner. Unfortunately, this happened with me a couple of times in my career and I would like to share with you what you should not do as a product owner. But before we jump into that, let's first try to understand who is this guy product owner. If we look at the Scrum Guide, in my perception, this is a little bit vague. In summary, as a product owner, you are accountable to maximize the value resulting from the work of developers. Well, how you do that? Hmm, it's on you, my friend. Scrum Guide is not going to tell you how to succeed as a product owner. That is the reason it is so easy to become something else. I like more a definition from Bob Galen. He says that as a product owner, we have four quadrants of responsibilities. We have first the product management to ensure we solve the customer's problem. So we have the customer perspective. And then we have the business analysis. We need to find ways to transform the customer's problems into business opportunities. And we also have the project management responsibility. When should we do what? And then we have the leadership. We have to inspire people to dream more. We have to put them in a mission. From my understanding, this is a better explanation of what is to be a product owner. If we focus on that, we can succeed. But it's easy for us to forget something and then we will won't be able to excel as a product owner. And what is the first misunderstanding? This is what I call the waiter. Let's imagine here, when you go to a restaurant, what do you do? You go there, you sit down and you wait. The waiter will come to you and look, excuse me, sir, what would you like to have for lunch? And then you say, I'd like to eat some burger. The waiter may offer you some french fries or something to go together, but the waiter will not tell you something. Why do you want to eat the burger? The waiter will just take the order and may recommend something on top of the order, but not questioning why you want to eat the burger. The waiter doesn't care if you should eat the burger or something else. The waiter will just take the order to the kitchen and then the kitchen will cook the burger. And once it's ready, the waiter will bring the burger to you and say, here's your burger, sir. Enjoy your meal. That's it. But if you think of a product owner, sometimes I guess we are waiters also. We go to the stakeholders and say, what kind of feature would you like to be implemented? The stakeholders will say, I would like to do this and this and that. And then you say, hmm, on top of that, we could do this. And you take the orders from stakeholders. And what do you do? You bring that to the kitchen. Oh, in this case, it's not a kitchen, it's developers. In the, and developers will implement exactly the wish of stakeholders. And the only thing they won't be is happy because they will look at you. We as developers, we like receiving problems to solve. And the only thing you bring to us is solutions to implement. We hate you, my friend. We hate you, my friend. We hate you, my friend. So this is not what you want to do. You want to ensure developers have problems that are worth solving. But if you are a waiter, then you just talk to the stakeholder, you get their orders, you send to developers, developers implement, and then you deliver that to the stakeholders. What is the result of that? The result is the following. You deliver exactly what the stakeholders wanted, and that is most probably not what the customers need. And you have a very good product that nobody wants to use. Then let's go to the second misunderstanding. And this is what I call the boss. First of all, Scrum has no hierarchy. And some product owners believe they are the boss of developers. I don't know where that comes from. Still, it is the case that product owners love going to daily scrums. And then they start saying things like this. Bjorn, you have to do this task for tomorrow. Ragnar, 
I want you to help Bjorn to do this. And then Ivor looks puzzled. Ivor says, uh, I think I'm going to take this task here and I'm going to work until the end of the day. And then you as a product owner look, No, Ivor, I had some other plans for you. I want you to implement something else. I'm going to talk with you later today. Product owners are not managers. We should not hack these Scrum events to do something that is our intention. We are part of the Scrum team. There is one single product, one single team, and this is called the Scrum team, and we are part of that. We should collaborate. Once we behave as boss, what is going to happen? Developers will do everything to ensure we cannot participate in the daily Scrum, because the only thing we do is to disturb them. We have to understand we are part of the team. There is no hierarchy. We are not a boss. We are a leader. And leader is a set of attitudes. It is not a title. It is a behavior. And we want to inspire the team to solve problems that are relevant. And we empower them to do that. Don't behave as a boss. You are not a boss of anybody. As a product owner, you are a partner of everyone. The third problem, well, that happened with me. I call this the architect. You are the one who thinks you have the best ideas. You know the problem you want to solve and you know why is it important, but you think developers should code. They should be locked on a cage coding as much as possible. And what do you do? You think about the solution upfront. You plan that precisely as precise as you can. I did that because, you know, I came from business analysis. First, I was a developer in my career, and then I became a business analyst. And then I thought, hmm, if I want to increase productivity of developers, what I should do is to plan the solutions up front. I wrote a lot of long documentations. At some point in time, I stopped using specification. Then I started using user stories. You know what I did? I wrote functionalities as user stories. In my case, what happened? I brought a lot of solutions for the team to work on. I wanted them to code. And I thought that was my work. I thought I had to think about the solution upfront. I was the bottleneck of everything. But I thought it was my work, so I had to do that. Then what happened? Developers were not engaged. They were not committed. And they were looking at me sometimes and asking, why do you think you have to babysit us? Do you think we don't know how to walk? Do you think we don't know how to solve problems? If you keep bringing us this bullshit solution, the only thing we will be sure is that we will never be successful. That was hard for me. But when I reflected, I thought, oh my God, I'm removing all of the fun from developers. Because first, I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to define the solution. And then I expect developers to execute. Developers don't want to feel locked in a factory where the only thing they do is to implement every day without knowing why. They want to participate and be part of the solution. And the only way of achieving that is to collaborate. And the best people to solve the problems are the ones who know the product. And then in combination with product owners or product managers, whatever the title you have, you can find meaningful solutions. It's never about defining what developers will do. It's all about defining what is worth solving. And the last one I would like to share with you is the protector. The product owner is accountable for the product backlog. Well, that is true, but it doesn't mean you should lock the product backlog and ensure nobody can insert anything there. And this is a little bit polemic because I believe efficient product backlogs are lean. It means that we have no more than two, three sprints there. And whenever the item gets old, I delete that. But still, I believe in collaboration. And I believe if stakeholders have something to share, let them write an item. An item is no more than a reminder of a conversation. You go talk to the stakeholder and decide if you want to pursue that or not. 
And if you're a great product owner, you have the product go defined. And then you can always ask the stakeholder, how does this item will help us achieve the product go? If it's not, then it will not be implemented. And the point I want to say is some product owners are really protective with the product backlog. It's like their kid. They say, hmm, don't touch my kid. My kid, I take care. So that's how it works. I educate my kid. I take care. I know what it needs to be done. And they block everyone else from working with the product backlog. You should empower people. If developers need, for example, to write something that is technical, you allow them to do so and you encourage them to do. If stakeholders have a business idea, you encourage them to insert the item and then you talk to them. Be careful because inserting the item doesn't mean you are going to work on that, but you are going to talk to the stakeholders when it's the time. So during this video, I share with you four pitfalls that you should avoid. You shouldn't be a waiter. You shouldn't be the boss. You shouldn't be the solution architect. And also you shouldn't be the backlog protector. I'd be curious if you have fallen in one of these pitfalls or if you have an additional one, write down the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to get more content similar to this one, just subscribe for more. I'm waiting for you in the next video. Thanks for watching.